This is the first video for the lecture on Bank Secrecy Act. Alright, so Bank Secrecy Act pertains to money laundering. So maybe you've heard this term before, maybe you watched a TV show or movie and there was a criminal who needed to um, do something with the money they had, so they started like a, a fake business or something. Um, that TV show um, Breaking Bad comes to mind. He had so much cash, he didn't know what to do. So they started, I think it was a chicken restaurant. Um, so anyway, money laundering is not washing money in a washing machine. Alright, it is um, a huge business. Think about how much crime there is. We've already talked in class about huge percentages of, of um, GDP goes to um, fraud. So it makes sense that um, monitoring, monitoring, washing the money from those frauds takes quite a lot of business, right? So money is laundered through legitimate businesses, right? So you have a crime like um, selling drugs or something like that and uh, they get all this cash. Well, they can't just spend it or that would be a big red flag, right? We've already talked about that in class, right? About how, in fact, we did that one case where we said, okay, this guy makes this much money, he has this much in assets, um, he needs to spend this much each month, but he only makes so much, how does he get that extra cash? Must be from a crime. All right, so that's the idea, is we're trying to catch these money launderings because there's some kind of other crime going on too. Um, uh, illegitimate money is used for terrorism a lot too, so we have to really try to track it down. It's a big business and we need to track it down. So the definition, disguising proceeds of a crime, right, so that they can legitimize it in the future. So they need to somehow get that money from their crime to seem legal, right? Um, they want to conceal the true ownership. They don't want you to know who's committing the crimes, right? So they're concealing it. They try to make it look like a legitimate business. Open something that that's hard to track cash through. Um, a lot of these um, techniques um, involve um, opening something that would be have a lot of cash, like a restaurant, um, vending machine type things. Um, car washes, things that, that have a lot of cash that it's hard to trace how much business was actually done there, right? Like um, dry cleaners, like how many garments did they actually dry clean? How can you tell, right? And those are certainly often cash businesses. So um, that's what they do. They take the proceeds of some kind of crime, run it through the legitimate business system somehow to make it seem like legitimate money and then they can spend it. Okay, so why, why do we care? Right, so what if somebody buys some weed and they pay cash for it? Who cares? Well, it goes way, way beyond that. Um, these are huge cartels laundering this money. Um, these cartels support terrorism. Um, uh, the, growth, the, the growth of poppies um, in countries like Afghanistan is used to create heroin which is then sold um, and that money is used to commit terrorist activities so it may seem like not that big of a deal but it's a big deal it prevents legitimate businesses from earning money um, it destabilizes financial institutions um, it's, uh, it's just a big big risk to have criminals laundering money through our legitimate financial institutions all right, so this is the main thing I want you to understand from this video lecture. All right, there's a cycle, there's a way they do this. And so we need to, just like any other kind of fraud, we're understanding the cycle so we can know where to interrupt it, right? So there's some, there, the first part of the cycle is there's a predicate crime. Now, yes, do we rely on law enforcement to try and stop drug sales? Do we rely on law enforcement to try and stop fraud? Well, sure, but it still happens, right? It's hard to stop, so what we're going to try to do to stop these crimes, especially terrorism, is try to catch the source, right? Follow the money. Have you ever heard that phrase? Follow the money? Um, well, to follow the money, you would follow it to that crime, and you could stop the crime by following money. 
Um, so anyway, some kind of crime occurs. They call it a predicate crime. Okay, that gives rise to cash. We're selling heroin from Afghanistan poppies. And so that's a crime, right? It's going to sponsor terrorism. All right, so that's the predicate crime is the drug sale. Okay, so now they got this cash. Well, they want to be able to spend it for stuff. They want to, they want to be able to use it in the United States to pay for stuff, right? Um, so, so they can do whatever it is they want to do with it. So they have to somehow get it to look like legitimate money. You can't just walk around paying millions of dollars of currency for stuff. Um, so placement, that's the next part. So it gets placed somehow into the um, legitimate stream of commerce, right? So um, getting into a bank, right? Depositing it into a bank account, purchasing um, some real estate with it, right? And remember, some of this money is coming from overseas, like in the form of like wire transfers and stuff like that. So here comes a million dollars to buy a condo in Miami or something, right? It's like coming by wire transfer from Russia right from Afghanistan right so placing it in the system that's the hardest part right so the placement is in, is initially into something legit right like a like an account at a bank that they've opened in their fake business name um, like purchasing real the high dollar real estate actually money is getting wired in from outside the country um, all that expensive real estate in San Francisco and New York those are coming in um, to title companies through wire transfers from outside the US. So how can they be sure that stuff's legit? Then what they do is they turn around and sell those condos for millions of dollars and they legitimize the money here in the US. So the placement is probably the place where we try to break up the, um, probably the point where it's easiest to break up the money laundering. All right, um, so it's getting it in there using a fake account. Um, the next step is layering. So they take that money they've gotten in here into the legitimate bank or the legitimate real estate transaction or the appearance of the legitimate real estate transaction. And they take it and they move it around. They sell this condo here and they purchase this one over here. And then they use that to invest in some stocks, which they sell and now they've got cash, right? So layering, they move it out of the country to the Cayman Islands, move it back, right? So they're layering, they're trying to move it to different business names so that they can't be traced back to the actual person who's doing the crimes, all right? Then once they've integrated, they've placed it, they've layered it, now they integrate it back to themselves right so they get it so they can use that's what integration is it's the last steps where the criminal takes that money and now they can use it. they've got it like in a personal account somewhere and they just spend it however they want to spend it because it looks like it's legitimate money right um, so those four steps are important to understand because we, we need to understand where we break it up in our next lecture um, we're going to talk about the Bank Secrecy Act and what financial institutions are required to do to basically for this placement part right because because the first placement is where we're going to catch them where we're going to fill out the forms we're going to notify FinCEN that placement part is where we're typically going to be able to stop the money laundering once it's in the banks once it's in the system then it's getting sent all around by wire transfers and it's hard to catch